Hello, welcome. My name is Lauren with the Lauren Teaches Flute, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to be productive and mindful during the challenging spots in practicing. So, how many times have you had something on your practice list and you started working on it, it wasn't working, so then you played it over and over and over and over again and it just felt like it wasn't getting better, maybe it was even getting worse, and you felt like you were hitting an invisible wall. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, how do we move through this and be productive and constructive in those situations. Before I get into this topic, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. If you like my content, I would love to have you here. And I would also like to let you know that I offer private online Skype lessons. So if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, I'll leave a link to that info in the description. All right, so I have four tips. I'm going to write into tip number one is simply to choose the mindset of I can work through this. A lot of times when we feel like we're hitting an invisible wall in our practice, we start to develop a mindset of I feeling powerless, saying things to ourselves like, I guess I just can't do this. Other people can do it, but I can't. It's just random. It feels like I have no control. If that's happening, no. <laughs> just, just kind of move away from that kind of inner dialogue and start to say things like, I can work through this. I can learn something from this. Something about this thing that's happening is going to make me a better player and I'm going to be, I'm going to be able to be more consistent because I went through this problem. <laughs> okay, so start moving in that direction. Tip two is to get curious. So instead of just trying to play it again and again and trying to play it right or the way you want it to sound, instead just embrace what's happening for a bit. Just see exactly what you're doing. Maybe the example is someone is learning their middle register notes and so they're starting to play little short pieces of music, maybe a line or two long that are in the middle register, but they keep, keep cracking to the low notes. So in that case, I would recommend to just get curious and aware of what you're doing. Usually <laughs> what's happening is tension is creeping in out of nowhere, somewhere. It could be just the jaw, the lips, the fingers, just things getting tighter and tighter. That often is playing a part when things are just not working. So, but just notice, just start to become aware. Okay, where am I angling my air? How do my lips feel? Are they tight? What do my lips look like? How much am I covering? And, you know, you can look in a mirror. You can really listen to what's happening. Just embrace what's happening and use that as an opportunity to learn more and observe exactly what it is and become more aware. The third tip is to learn from others and your own experimentation. Of course, the best way to learn from others, the fastest way is working one-on-one -on -one with someone. So it can be, if you have access to private lessons, that of course, a private lesson teacher can tell you out of left field, something you never would have thought of or thought the problem was and it can really click a lot of things into place. So it can really be an efficient way to move through those challenging spots in practice when things just don't feel like they're working. So that's really, really helpful. But if you don't have access to that, other ways you can learn from others. Another great thing resource is method books. Method books like The Gilbert Legacy and Kincaidiana. Actually, I, I really love those two <laughs> method books. Another one that has a lot of information and reading material on the mechanics of playing the flute is the Ram Paul School. So the Gilbert Legacy goes into a lot of the nitty gritty details of what to do, what it looks like, feels like when you're playing low notes, warm-ups to go with it, what exactly are you doing in the middle register, the high register, it has pictures, it has really detailed 
information on all that that can give you new ideas and new insight and new perspective and new awareness same with Kincaidiana. it is just like a manual <laughs> for playing the flutes very detailed and a lot of information on the mechanics of flute fundamentals and flute playing very very good books so that's another way to learn new information that I really love <laughs> and experimenting. So the next tip I have is to take note of what works and what doesn't work. And so this is, I wanna bring in something I've talked about in my past videos, my troubleshooting binder. This was the thing that I came up with after I left, I, I was out of college and I didn't I wasn't taking weekly private lessons and I was feeling like how do I how do I know what to do <laughs> you know I felt I felt like that part of me that was like oh I'll just ask my teacher <laughs> you know so how did I how did I get more independent and self sufficient I made a troubleshooting binder and so what that is is let's say that day I was struggling with flat low notes my low notes sounded flat and dull and I didn't know how to get them really nice, balanced, and in tune. So I'd write the problem down in bold letters, <laughs> flat low notes, underline it, and I would experiment. So you could experiment, you know, of course, if you have access to private lessons, you can get information there. You can read method books and really learn the nitty gritty of what exactly you need to do to play the flutes from method books. If you feel well versed enough and the yeah the other thing I recommended was listening and imitating um, and just doing your own experimentation so then I would find things out through doing all these things and I would learn oh I can do this oh I just have to do this exercise or I have to make this change and this is what it feels like and I mean I would write it in a way that made sense to me so I came up with a lot of new techniques and ideas for troubleshooting my own problems in the troubleshooting binder. And I've had this since 2013. So I've written down a lot of things under that one section of flat low notes. I have a section for the middle register. I have a section for the high register. If I want my high notes to sound sweet and in tune, I have a list of things that I did that helped me do that. If I want them to sound robust and have like a lot of depth and color in my high notes and also be in tune, I have things I've written for that. I've had this for almost 10 years, if not 10 years, this troubleshooting binder. And I can see all the things I've written. And usually what, I, what started to happen was I started to see patterns and I started seeing the same problems coming up and then pretty much, pretty soon it became automatic. Like, oh, I know what I need to do. And I'm not so dependent on even the troubleshooting binder. I can kind of like distance myself from that since usually it was the same kind of problems that kept coming up and I, you know, found enough ways to solve the problem to, to know what to do without the troubleshooting binder. So take note of what works, take note of what doesn't work. And another version of this is start a troubleshooting binder, write the problem in bold and experiment and write down underneath that bold, <laughs> bold section. My example was flat low notes. You can write down all the things that worked, that helped you, that got you the progress and results that you wanted. And these are things you can learn from, if you're working in private lessons, those are things you can learn in lessons and add to your troubleshooting binder. So yeah, really helped me make my tone more consistent, trust myself, feel like I had more control over my sound, feel like I could trust my sound to be, to be what I wanted it to be when I needed it to be that way. <laughs> so. So yeah, more, much more consistent tone, much more consistent playing just by starting my troubleshooting binder in 2012 or 2013. All right, so the last tip, bonus tip I have is take breaks. So if you're practicing and it's just not working, it's okay to just step away from the situation and 
focus on something else for a while, come back to it fresh. Uh, whatever you do, it's really, I mean, if you find yourself getting on that hamster wheel of playing something over and over and over and over and over again and feeling like it's not working, that's when you gotta catch yourself and step away. That's when new ideas come. That's when you can come back to it with fresh ears, fresh eyes, fresh, <laughs> fresh, you know, perspective. And that's when you can start to move through it and find solutions and make progress in your practice. So those are my tips today. So I hope this was helpful and informative. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe below for more tutorials and videos like this one. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you in another video very soon. Until next time, take care. Bye.